So we can do simplifying rational expressions now. We're not being asked to solve anything, because whenever we have an expression, there aren't any equal signs involved. But now we're going to introduce one. Now I'm asked to solve for something. How do we solve rational equations? So, so far we have dealt with rational expressions. Expressions. And all we can do with expressions are simplify them. Now we introduce an equality symbol and are working toward solving the rational equations. So we simplify expressions, we solve equations. So now we have an equal sign in there. So looking at that first example, I need to solve this rational, I have fractions everywhere, equation. Got an equal in there. How do I get rid of all of those fractions? I'd like to deal with whole numbers if I can help it. And how do we do that? We multiply by what? Multiply by the... LCD clears out all of those denominators. So let's find the LCD between 3, 6, and 9. Might be right off the bat, you can jump there, but let's break it down a little bit. So 3 is prime, 6 we can break into 3 and 2, and 9 is broken into 3 and 3. So our LCD has to be divisible by all of them, so I'm just going to pick 9. And what is this one missing? That my other factor of 6 has a factor of 2. And are we missing the 3? No, we took into account. Looking at our prime 3, we've already taken that into account. So our LCD in this case is 18. So if we take that and multiply every single term in our equation by that LCD, it's designed to be divisible by 3, 6, and 9 get rid of all of those fractions. So let's do that. I've got 2 thirds, 5 sixths, and x over 9. And again, every single term needs to be multiplied by 18. Every single term by 18. Every single term by 18. So we want to do that in division first, since it's going to make the numbers easier to work with. 18 is designed to be divisible by each of these. So 18 divided by 3 gives me 6. 6 times 2 gives me 12. If you don't like doing it in that order, you can do the multiplication and the division. It's just bigger numbers. And over here, 18 divided by 6 is 3. 3 times 5 is 15. Got rid of all the fractions on the left, which is what we wanted to do. And the same story for on the right. 18 divided by 9 is 2. 2 times x is 2x. And we can solve that now. So what do we have? On the left-hand side, when we combine 12 and 15, I've got 27 is equal to 2x. We need x on its own, so we divide both sides by 2. So in the end, x is equal to 27 halves. All right, how can we check if you aren't certain? Plug it back in, make sure that it makes our equation true. So let's jump to the next one. Similar story, fractions everywhere. We need to clear out those denominators. So let's look at building that LCD. So how can I break up 6, 3, and 2? 8 can be broken into 4 and 2, and 4 can go farther. And 12 is 4 and 3, and 4 can be broken down. So I know my LCD has to be divisible by each of these. I'm going to pick 12 to start with, because it's the biggest, and we need to look. What is my LCD missing that this factor of 8 has? Another 2. And what is my LCD missing that 6 has? Nothing. We've taken those already into account. So our LCD in this case is 8 times 3, which is 24. So again, every single term on the left, every single term on the right. 
multiplied by our LC in this case, which is 24. So the first one, second one, last one. If we do the division first to make life a little bit easier, so I've got 24 divided by 6 gives me 4, 4 times x, 4x, got rid of the fractions. 24 divided by 8 gives me 3, 3 times x, negative 3x, and we had a minus sign, so we need to take that into account. And we can combine those like terms eventually. And how about over here? 24 divided by 12, we're left with 2. So when we combine our like terms on the left, I get the value x out. So we've solved, we're, we're finished. And again, how can we check to make sure that it's true? Plug it back into the original, make sure that it holds true. So go ahead and try the next one. Use the LCD to clear out the denominators, solve for x. So what came out of that first one? We need to find the LCD so we can multiply and clear out the denominators. So let's see, off on the side I've got 4, which is 2 and 2, 6 is 3 and 2, and 8 has 3 factors of 2. So I know my LCD is going to be divisible by 8, and we need to look, what are we missing from 6? Factor of 3, are we missing anything from 4? Nope, we've already got those taken into account. So our LCD in this case, again, is 24. Every single term multiplied by 24. Every single term, every single term. So what started to come out here? Again, whole number. 24 divided by 4 gives me 6. 6 times x gives me 6x. Next one, 24 divided by 6 gives me 4. And 24 divided by 8, 3. So when we combine our like terms over here, I have two factors of x equal to 3. So what value did you get for x? 3 halves. And again, we can always plug it back into the original, try and make sure that it holds true. So let's move away from just having constants in our denominator and move towards having little expressions down there. So what is our LCD in this case? I need my variables to be up top. They need to live in the numerator so we can solve. And right now they live down below. So we need to multiply by our LCD to bring everything up top. And what is our LCD? X times, what else? 4 minus X. Because I know it has to be divisible by one of them. If I start there and ask, what is this one missing that the other one has? That entire factor that lives down below. So as we multiply by the LCD here, I've got X times 4 minus X. X times 4 minus X. What's really happening? So I've got X divided by X. That'll go away. And up top, I'm just left with 4 minus X. Variables living in the numerator now, which is good. And over here, again, this is an entire quantity together. Group together what comes together. And what cancels? 4 minus X over 4 minus X. So we're left with an X over here. So in reality, when we have one fraction exactly equal to one fraction, it's just like we're cross-multiplying. Maybe you can remember that from high school or a beginning college class. But that only works when we have a proportion like this. Fraction equal to fraction. We couldn't do it over in this example because I have two pieces and one over here. So this part qualifies, but we're not quite there on the left-hand side. So now to solve, what has to happen? I need the x's together. I'm going to add him to the other side, divide by 2, and x is equal to 2. And we could plug that one in pretty quickly to see that it does hold true in the original. 1 half is equal to 1 over 4 minus 2, which is a half. So we got there. And let's try this next one. What is the LCD between 3x, x, and what's over here? I could put that over 1, and that's completely fine. So what is my LCD going to be? It's going to be divisible by 3x. And I can look. Am I missing anything there that I have present over here? Nope. 
1 times anything is itself. So our LCD in that case is just 3x. So again, every single term times 3x times 3x. Let's see what we get coming out. 3x divided by 3x, gone, I'm left with 2. And x divided by x will go away, but I've got 3 times 1. So I'm adding 3 to that. And what is that equal to? 3 times 10 will give me 30, and x is still living up in the numerator. Which is good, we need it to live up in the numerator. And we can combine these like terms. I've got 5 constants equal in 30x. How do we solve for x? Divide by 30. And can we rewrite this in a nicer form? We always want to simplify if we can help it. 5 goes into 30 how many times? 6 of them. So I really have 1 over 6. And again, we can always plug back into the original, check and make sure that it holds true. So go ahead and take the next try. Solve for x. So a similar story happened in this case. What was our LCD between these two fractions? If I take x from the first one, what is it missing that the other one has? Entire factor, 6 minus x. So when we multiply by the LCD on both sides to every single term, what's happening? It's like we're cross multiplying. x's go away and we're left with 6 minus x. And over here, 6 minus x goes away, and we're left with, as if we multiply that way, x. So giving our terms on the same side, 2x's together, dividing by 2, what value did you get out for x? 3. And again, we could plug that in pretty quick and check. Is 1 third really equal to 1 over 6 minus 3? Yes. 